Bros and hoes, peeps and creeps, this is Bodala coming to you live from the Overdome. Um, I am doing another video game review. I know that everybody is looking forward more so to uh, gameplay, but um, that's taking me a long time. I'm going to try and get all of it done this weekend, which is going to be really tedious. Anyways, uh, the game that I am about to review is one I just finished, uh, so I should, it should be fresh in my mind. Uh, it's a fantastic game. I already recommend it. Uh, Driver San Francisco, uh, made by Ubisoft, um, and it brings back that element I remember of Ubisoft uh, with First Prince of Persia uh, that I played, uh, The Sands of Time. Not the remake uh, based on the movie at all. Uh, the one that the movie was based on, actually. Uh, it was a fantastic storyline, so much so that they decided to make a movie out of it. Uh, and it was, uh, this is kind of the same thing. Um, word of the wise, there will be spoiler alerts in this, so uh, if you don't want it spoiled, uh, just skip past it. If you're okay with it, fine. Uh, so, uh, here's the basic gist. Okay, you are John Tanner. Uh, you are a detective, and you are after a guy named Jericho who just escaped from prison using a cyanide, like, acid capsule that he hid in his mouth or something, and he bit it open and just, like, destroyed his handcuffs. Uh, some random girl uh, had a gun on a helicopter, and she had a rocket launcher. This is seriously how you see it. Uh, <laughs> some random girl had a gun. Uh, and a rocket launcher, which at the time you're like, where the fuck did she get a rocket launcher? Like, how did she hijack the plane and sneak a rocket launcher onto it? Well, not a plane, a helicopter, but how do you do that? Like, it's one thing if you, like, discreetly hold a gun somewhere where they wouldn't check, but how do you carry that? Um, so she had an RPG, she shot a car, and Jericho escapes, John Tanner tries to get him, all of a sudden a semi hits, smacks him directly, head on, um, ends up that John Tanner, uh, gets, uh, put into the hospital, um, and he's in a coma. Now this is where it gets trippy, and you have no idea what's going on. You can shift into other vehicles at this point. You don't realize you're in a coma at all the whole time, but it's kind of obvious. Um, the whole time you're in the hospital in a coma. Uh, here's where it gets trippy. Uh, one does not know uh, whether or not uh, his actions are actually working. Um, because I think the idea is that so long as he's in a coma, his consciousness is apart from his body, uh, and he can put it anywhere. So he can shift, is what it's called, in other vehicles, uh, go into the bodies of other drivers and control them. Uh, and he can do this in gameplay, in all the missions, pretty much everything. Uh, so you can you can go into other cars and crash them into people, and it's really fun. It's so much fun to do that stuff. Um, and it's this awesome open world. Yeah, you can't get out of your vehicle, but you can drive around. Uh, it's a great amount of cars from everything from just a regular, like... Um, old Oldsmobile, or a, a Ford Crown Victoria, to a Pagani, or a Maserati, or uh, even a Lamborghini Diablo, Murcielago, um, and, like, it's, it's pretty amazing, um, how many cars there are. Now, um, the storyline, back to the storyline, uh, a lot of people want to say it makes no sense, and I would be inclined to agree, uh, cause how is he in a coma, and at the same time getting hurt while he's in a coma, and he's failing missions in the coma, uh, he's damaging vehicles in his coma, like, why doesn't he, once he realizes it, why doesn't he just, like, have infinite powers, like, I don't get that, but, and of all the things to be in a coma, you're stuck in the same damn city, like, what the fuck kind of slap in the face is that, and there's even a part where he's like, yeah, after this, I'm gonna be in a coma, and I'm gonna have a yacht, and I'm gonna have my own private boat, and everything's gonna be better than this, this is bullshit, because <laughs> he really got ripped off in that coma dream, um, and anyways, like, the whole point of it is that he's in the coma, and he figures out what Jericho's trying to do, and he's building a bomb with cyanide you find out that the whole thing isn't really there he's trying to create a diversion so he can free someone from prison 
um, because that's the deal he had with that person. That person had him freed because he was friends with uh, whatever that lady was, and he said he would get his freedom. And he also paid him $30 million because Jericho was like, you better pay me money too, for no fucking reason. Um, Because he's a dick, pretty much. And... (laughs) And uh, your partner, get ready for this, uh, he's a black guy, he has an afro, he's like a typical buddy cop partner, uh, his name is Tobias Jones, oh, <laughs> which is one of the most stereotypical black names I've ever had. It ends up that in the end he saves your life by driving an Escalade into, like, uh, into Jericho, <laughs> and that whole time I'm just like... Tobias Jones, <laughs> and it's it's like it's the whole the whole thing is just like it's just totally him, and he says so many stereotypical things like "What the hell are you talking about, man? You crazy? We need to go grab a drink." <laughs> it's just like like they could have made it less stereotypical, like they could have made it like "Man, I gotta go to a synagogue." Or something, something like that that's just, like, out of the ordinary. It would have still made you laugh because it's like, why would he say, I gotta go to a synagogue? But at least it's it's diverse and, and possibly taking minds off of stereotypes. Uh, but anyways, um, so yeah, that's really cool. All the abilities you have are really awesome. You have all these challenges, all these races, all these dares you can do. Some of them will really piss you off. The checkpoint races made me so angry because in the end, once you get to the last few checkpoints, if you crash, it's over. You're done. You can't you can't do shit. And one time I was at the very end and I hooked onto a tow truck uh which <laughs> like you can hook on to tow trucks and like they tow you. And that's how you can escape cops sometimes. But I hooked onto it, and you have to, like, press, uh, you have to, like, just wiggle the left stick around for, like, half an hour, and then I lost it. I didn't, I didn't get it. And it made me so mad, because I was right in front of the finish line, then tow truck, and then nope. So, yeah, that was pretty much it. Uh, uh, but it, it's so much fun. I mean, I know I keep saying that, but it is a lot of fun. I got it for me and uh, Eric and Isaiah, and we played it online, and that's really fun. Um, I can't, I personally cannot wait for a sequel to this game. Um, I heard that this isn't the first in the Driver series, and I hope that you still have cool abilities like the ability to shift. Um, but Ubisoft always does cool stuff with that, like with the Sands of Time. Yeah, you had that dagger that went back in time. Maybe you have it in the next one. I actually didn't play the next two, but who cares, you know? They can make games work without certain elements like that, and that's what I really like about Ubisoft. Um, this game, I, I mean, I fully recommend it. Uh, this isn't even a joke at this point. Uh, it's really fun. The story is immersive as long as you have an open mind. Um, sure, it doesn't make any damn sense for quite a while, and you don't even know if, um, the whole trippy thing is, like, when he wakes up, is he really still, is he really awake, or is he in a coma? Because, I mean, everything still works out for him just fine. And, um, I don't know. I don't know. And he went through that giant diversion bomb. I don't know, it's, it's really, it's really intriguing, uh, and I feel like I'm just rambling about it, uh, but if you play it, you'll know what I'm talking about, uh, and, uh, I really wanted to say one more thing, and I completely forget what it was, oh yeah, um, in terms of the challenges and the jumps and everything that you can do in the game, that part's really well done, uh, there are these cars, these cars, these, uh, uh, vehicle transporters they're called uh you can go behind them and the vehicle transporter the thing is down so you could just leap off of that car we had so much fun with that uh me eric and isaiah and uh yeah that was pretty cool and you could do those in races and it's it just it, it becomes really cool and really funny the gameplay ends up making it so that you have almost full control and you can make the silliest or the coolest things happen all at once. Um, so 
That's my review of Driver San Francisco. I fully recommend it. Um, like and favorite if you enjoyed. Uh, subscribe and yeah, this is Bodala signing out.